Hello and welcome to Pyre. I'm Lazy Bones, and on where we last left off, we did a right, our first official rights battle thing, and we won. Did a good job. Pat on the back. Now let's continue uh, right after well that battle. <coughs> Headwind. Well, my friends, what can I say? The rights are real. And we, and we're in. Uh -huh. Rookie. Uh, the getting out of here club. Next up on the agenda, keep chasing stars until we are free. Conceal Tavidias. Until we are free. Conceal Tavidias. Until we are free. Uh -oh. Here, here. Sounds fine. Might as well be us instead of Lendell back there. Anyway, guess we better start packing. As the others go about their business, Hedwin turns to you. Ligeratus. Reader, come walk with me while the stars are still out. <clears throat> you and Hedwin walk in silence for a time before he speaks up. Kisantirna. You have questions. Come, ask away. We need you in on this for as long. For the long haul. Oh, I screwed it up. Headwind wishes to know if anything is troubling you. Uh, ask why he was exiled. Ask how he got this wagon. Ask why he cannot conduct the rites yourself. Ask what happens if you refuse to help. Everyone has their reasons at this point. You would like to know this. The Black Wagon and its con contents belong to a group called the Nightwings. What happened? You led your fellow exiles to the rights, yet they have not asked you to participate firsthand. Why? You are beginning to get the impression that your participation is not optional. Well... Let's, uh, uh, ask the big question. What, uh, brought you here from the exiles, huh? Uh, as you ask Hedwin, he, what he did to get sentenced to living in the downside, he maintains eye contact and his smile. Some data. Good question, my friend. We're going to have a lot of time to discuss that, and many other things. Make you a deal. Read the stars for us again, and I'll tell you all about it on the way. <coughs> Man, my throat. <coughs> you sense he speaks truly as he... Wait, what? You sense he speaks truly as he beckons toward the fading dark above. Gaze at the stars. Seek out your destination. Oh. So we did this. We can't do the tiny stars. Oh. I see. So these are what's coming next after these right I still don't understand what the little stars are hmm okay we're going here then I guess oh That's a long way north and west. We'll see if this old wagon's fit for it. Then he turns to the others. How's it going, Rugi? Imps fed, wheels clean. Status Jody? No sign of howlers. Everything is secure. Good. Then 
get some rest. We're headed to the spring of Jamur. At dawn, we're off. Spring of Jamur. Jamur? According to the stars, the next rite shall soon commence here. The Alpha Chief hopped, hoped bathing here would cure his ailments, but it, it only made him itch. Okay. Continue the journey. Oh, that's uh, this. Okay, I can enter the wagon. No, let's continue the journey. Jamore Valley. Jamore Valley, you have not yet been to this region of downside. Rookie knows this mountain pass, though, to through to an arid region further north. So we can't visit his friend, huh? Jamur Valley. Jomaur Valley. The climate here in Jamur Valley is hot and uncomfortable. On top of that, we have a stowaway. <laughs> Girl! <laughs> home? We can go home? She must have latched onto the undercarriage as you cross the bridge. Her manner is odd, though you sense she means no harm. She must have overheard some of your fellow exiles' conversations. You need but say the word, Hedwin. Oh, come on. You can't be serious, Jody. She's just some kid. Who managed to climb aboard our wagon undetected, but still. Do it, Jody. Jadariel approaches the girl and looms over her. Listen to me, girl. We cannot guarantee we shall get you home, or any of us, or any one of us. But at present, we have room for you, and adequate provisions. You may accompany us for a time. <sighs> Jadario leaves without awaiting a response, presum presumably to make room in the wagon for your new guest. The stowaway is overjoyed at this. <laughs> really? You are so kind. You are most kind to someone you just met, like me. May the eight scribes smile upon you all. She claps her hands, bursts into laughter, and performs some sort of dance. Ruki stares at all of this and leans in close to Hedwig. Yes, I got it. Hey, so uh, what gives? First the reader, now you're taking her along. What are we gonna take an eight might bitten drive imp we find now, too? Huh? We gonna take an eight Every might bitten. I miss things. I keep doing that. Easy, Rookie. I think he'd want us to bring this one along. Who? Sandalwood? I thought you said he asked we find someone to fit in every type of mask. Near as I can tell, your yours would fit her just fine. He asked that we use our best judgment. Besides, we send her away. She'll go telling anyone she finds about us. We can't risk that right now. So, um, I can come in? It's very hot, and I'm a little thirsty, and a little tired too. Yes, you're welcome here with us. One question, though. What do we call you? Um, well, this is embarrassing, I think, but I don't know for sure. It's just back home. They called me lots of names, like 
for the color of my hair. Be getting, they made fun of you just because you got gray hair? Vistalia. That's it! My name! It rhymes with gray. My name? My name? It... Oh, it's just... They called me lots of names. You sense the girl is struggling to recollect a certain name she felt best suited her. You think that you can help the stowaway girl make peace with her name. You sense her name is May, K, Fay, Day, Zay, Shay, Ray. Consider other possibilities. You consider more ways for the stowaway girl to make peace with her name. Lay, Shay, Nay, Tay, Jay, Gay, Bay. <laughs> bay, huh? Gray Bay. Consider the first names. What were they again? May, K, Fay, Day, Jay, Shay, Ray. Let's go with the first option, May. You suggest that the stowaway girl's name is May. She is a young vagabond girl with an odd manner and an unshakable sense of curiosity. Vistalia. Why, that's it! My name is May! My name is May! Where I am from the... Where I am from, they called me May. The moon touched. But I guess maybe you don't have to say that part because I didn't really like it. <sighs> Your fellow exiles decide to bring May along. For now, she almost collapses from exhaustion. So you take her in and show her somewhere she can rest. May join the group. She is tired but excited. Welcome her aboard. So we got a new team member. Okay. The black wagon arrives in somewhat peaceful stretch of Jamor Valley. Your companions wish to hole up here for the night to give May and all of you a little time to rest. Consider your options. Huh? Nothing else looks new except for her. May. May seems to be recovering well since you found her. She seems fascinated by everything and everyone in the wagon. Oh, hi mister. You are the one who knew my name. You guessed it right. You did. Thank you for your hospitality. I've just been eating with the imps and talking to the wagon. This wagon. He and I are some are the same age. Almost to the very day. But I am older. By three weeks. So I am giving him a hard time. Little brother, I call him. He is a good wagon, isn't he? He will take us very, very far. My little brother. Sure, he pulls at my hair at times, and I don't like it very much. But he is family. I am happy to be here with my family. I thought that I had lots, lost them all again. I thought that I had lost them all. Oh, but we have stopped now, haven't we? Then I should go outside to dance in case the scribes are watching. Bye, mister. Smiling back at you, she prances out the door. Huh. Oh, I guess I can look at everybody's stuff now, huh? So this is her special. Press RT to push during a right. Oh, because she passed the two thing right there. Got it. 
she leveled up and all I had to do was stand guard. Interesting. I'm looking at their stuff right here. Hope. Oh, the girl's not in this. Okay. Or May. Alright. Consider your options. Having pitched camp with your companions. For once, it seems you have some quiet time to spare. Your fellow exiles are taking a moment to unwind. Jadariel motions for you to join them. Best get used to your new life here, reader. We seldom get much moments of reprieve. Perhaps some further study of that book shall pass the time. You could join me if... Wait, 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 wait! You could join me for a little stroll if you're feeling up to it. Always something to be forged around here. Or you could teach us more of what you know. Prepare us for the next ride. In ca any case, we do what we can to stay busy. Keeps the sense of isolation well at bay. Uh, at certain junctures, you may choose from several locations. Use what time you have. Forge for resources, study in private, mentor a companion. Huh. Okay, search the surrounding area for valuables to add to your black wagon stash of goods. Hone your skills as a reader to grant small global bonuses to your fellow exiles during the rites. Teach your fellow exiles of the old ways to raise their individual rank in the rights more quickly. Ooh. Well, we already have something to sell. I don't really know what uh, sort of currency we get and how often we'll be able to use it. Uh, so I'll avoid this for now until we find like a market person and we see what things we can get so things for the right hmm let's be a little social and uh, mentor a companion <laughs> having gleaned knowledge from the book of rights you can impart some of its teachings as each exile's path towards enlightenment is personal you will have to mentor them one at a time. Ah! Oh, so Rookie is the furthest behind, so let's help uh, Rookie out. Sure, chum. I could go for some enlightenment right about now. Might take the edge off. You illustrate to Rookie some of the in intricacies of the rites, focusing on how all three in a triumvirate can move and act as of one mind. Your sense, you sense he grasps some of the concepts. Haha, oh wow. See that chum? Only Rookie Greentail's got some bite in him yet. Old. All right. Ha ha. Cloudy jump rookie can jump a second time while airborne. Oh, that's very useful. Rookie deals an additional five fire symbol when plunging into the adversary's pyre. I think that's damage. Hmm. Lucky break. He is banished by an adversary. Rookie has a 50% chance to return in only one second. Lightning run when sprinting. Rookie accelerates faster than usual to an even faster top speed. Rookie casts his aura 50% farther than usual. Uh, what 
Rookie banishes adversaries by casting his aura. The blast can banish nearby adversaries. Hmm. Rookie can jump a second or third time while... Oh, man, that's really nice. After plunging into the adversary's pyre, Rookie soon returns rather than remaining banished. Maneuvers of many main. You know what? I like this. I'm taking that. Phew. I got to hand it to you, chum. That book's not quite as boring as I thought. I better go lie down. All right. So we got somebody leveled up, which is great. Uh, that's what I thought. Thought maybe there's somebody in there, but maybe not. The path leading further west splits off. The once... And once again, your fellow exiles turn the choice of where to go over to you. May seems enthusiastic for whichever route you choose. Glo Gluehive. <laughs> Fall flat. Uh, the north route across the Jamar Valley passes the remains of the high titan does not sound nice the south route crosses the jamar valley is riddled with barren rock and bone may believes those who travel this path shall be a swift uh, uh be as swift as jamar of the eight of scribes may believes those who travel this path shall be as strong as gall of the eight scribes hmm From that one battle we had, I believe that speed is very important. But I like this path seems more difficult. Which I want to do the more difficult paths. No, we already have some good speed. They could use some strength. May. Oh, May is behaving stranger than usual as she, as you pass through the stark badlands of Glue Hive. But the north route across the Jamar Valley passes the remains of Hive Titan, the lifeless corpse of a, oh man, Bal and Thuus Baelanthus still looms over the western edge of the valley. The scribes! I think they're here. I think that they were here. Can you not feel their presence in the sand and in the air and all about? At first you pay it little heed, though later you observe your fellow exiles seem to be in a better in better spirits than before huh perhaps it was the previous day's rest that did everyone good your companions gain plus one presence for the next fight oh that's good what does presence do exactly again <laughs> i don't remember Oh, en route to the spring of Jam Jamur, you hear all about the roving slug market, which appears to be nearby. Rookie insists you take a look after you settle in. Page revealed the last emperor. So this is the slug market. Mm, maybe we should have <laughs> scoured for resources. He seems to have something on his mind. Hedwin motions for you to join him. While his manner is as easygoing as ever, you sense he is searching for the right words for what he is about to say. 
You'd asked, uh, you asked what I did to get thrown in here. Figured I'd tell you. The others know. I was on the blood border for several years. An outrider. No real rank. But a pretty important job. Whenever the harp swooped in, was up was up to me to raise the alarm. Blood border. The northern edge of the Commonwealth is a flat and vulnerable expanse. The high wing remnants seized upon it in every opportunity from the cover of clouds or darkness. Harps. A winged race also known as the high wing remnants at war with the Commonwealth. They are a coarse as their feathers they are as uh, they hold themselves superior the arch justice and rebel the ninth one day the harps came without warning no alarm it was a slaughter so i heard because i wasn't there i was Nesintera. i was with one of them she look that's a story for another time the point is they branded me Hedwin the Deserter before they sent me here. I didn't want to fight. I abandoned my post. My friends, they paid dearly for it. I ended up down here. Hedwin looks at you as his smile reappears. It's not something I like to talk about, as you can tell. But I know that you'd been wondering, and you deserve to know. I had... I made a promise to you earlier, when we first met, that you'd go free, and wheel, and well, if any of us go free. That promise might not carry that much weight, I guess, coming from a deserter. Anyway, that's all. Thank you for hearing me out. There's not much good here in the downside, but at least the past is behind us. He leaves you there to consider his words. Oh, updated, huh? Do I have a new thing? Gol Galoth, the Master of General. How many nations did I scour in the name? Oh, we did read this. I think. This looks new, though. It's really new. Oh. Oh. See, it said five there before, though. What? And now the thing's different. Uh. uh. Oh, shoot. Uh. I am going over the time limit. Um, hmm. Not a lot happened this episode. I guess it was really much, pretty much just story. So, yeah, that's this episode. <laughs> On the next episode, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to happen. But, uh, yeah. I'm going to end the episode off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This is right. Or right. This is Pyre. <laughs> I'm Lazy Bones, and uh, see you on the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye.